you're just joining us, Bob Bailey here. Shotgun takes a snap. Oh my God! It's Welcome to the future of sports betting with Atlas World Sports. Atlas World Sports is your super sports book on your phone. Find the latest lines in real time to give yourself every advantage to beat the house. Better action coming soon. Atlas World Sports will deliver a winning experience from all from rookie bettors all the way to Hall of Fame bettors with our AI-based Game Winners predictive model for subscribers. Find Atlas World Sports in iOS and Android app stores or via atlasworldsports.com. Atlas World Sports, may the odds forever be in your favor. Bet better. All right, so here we are. Are we going right now? This is like the old days. There is a go. This is the old days. Scotty, this is literally like the old days of Earth Magoos. Yeah, new location. How how you been? I've been great, man. I've been good. Things Thank are uh, things are dialed up around here at APM, and uh, it's always good when you pop in to the, to the city. Seems yeah. like it's a reoccurring thing nowadays. Wow, yeah. Los Angeles, I just came in here uh, three days ago. To LA. Any reason? Uh, it was like, you know, we got a, I got a place in Boston and uh, thought I'd Gorgeous make, place, by the way. Yeah. Make, thought I'd make a move to just live out there for a little bit. It's just kind of normal. I mean, I fucking hate LA. I know you do. I can't take it. I think that whole thing's played out, though. What do you mean by that? It's a good city, man. A lot of good places to go eat. Nightlife's kind of coming back. Yeah, no, not really. It doesn't deserve all the hate you give it. It's just not a fun place to be, I don't think. I just feel it's, it's just, I don't know what happened to L.A. It used to be so much fun. You used to love it, man. I you used, were all about it. I used to love it. I did used to love coming in here, too. I don't come in here anymore. I brought you back this week, though. Of course you did. This I'm, place is great. You guys got some shows going on. You got Victory coming on, on here? Yeah, Victory, which is uh, Connolly's podcast, Entourage Guys. And we got a few others. Wait, Connolly? Connolly. Kevin Connolly? Is he back there? I don't know. Is he's, he, he's in the booth. I'm very disappointed that you're not joining the three-person split screen that we're probably going to edit this into. You know, I, I could have to step out to take a call. Yeah. Some things going on. But, Bob, I have a question for you. Or do you don't not, not want it to be the ninth podcast that you've recorded with me that hasn't aired? Uh, I would love to break the record for most recorded podcasts that are never going to make the air. Um, yeah. I have a question for you, Bob. With regards to your travel, do you book, because you move around so much, are you just an ace at jumping on your phone and with an app and booking a flight, or do you have somebody that does that? How do you how do you book your travel, Bob? It's a great question, Kevin. Uh, I'm glad we have so many relevant topics to discuss <laughs> here tonight. I book my travel basically through, uh, Brett does it through a travel agent, which I'm actually kind of mad about, because I'm like, why do I pay Brett to do this, and why is he outsourcing the work to a travel agent and there's a $35 fee every time? There's a $35 fee every time I book a flight. But what's your turnaround time? Like, what's the guy's name? Brett? Yeah. Is this the guy with the little shorts? The it Brett is. wears the short shorts sometimes. He wears short shorts. Wait, yeah. Hang on, hang on. He doesn't go on Expedia and book your flight. He goes to a different person and has that person book the travel? Yes, which is that's, fine. That's okay. Is it? Yeah, that's a lot. But what kind of turnaround do you give him? So, like, right now it's 5 o'clock on Tuesday. Will you say to him... At six o'clock, like, yo, I gotta get out of LA tonight. Yeah. I mean he's he's the thing with Brett is he's twenty four seven around the clock. And if I say Let, let's go, let's go. So we'll, I'll just usually say next flight available. Obviously it's first class an option. And then depending on the travel, how t- how long it is the flight. because uh, I don't need to sit in first class, but at the same time, if you're taking a six hour flight and you have the means to be able to do it, I think it makes sense. You know, two and a half be. hours is my cutoff. I can sit anywhere but after two and a half hours it's it, it, it's got to be like a bad you need the live the live flats is what i with the main thing that i do i send them on a witch hunt for for live uh live flats some planes have them some planes don't united jet, cross, cross jet blue is the first mover i think on it jet blue mint best kept secret in travel keep that off the ig bob really <laughs> really fucking my favorite my favorite airline i think is jet blue the mint they do a great job but yeah no so we're in uh we just obviously are in boston Summer still had her place here in L.A., and so she uh, kind of helped her, I think, come here to maybe figure out the process of moving all the shit and whatnot. But uh, we got a new show coming up on Rumble that we're doing. We're going to the Super Bowl in Arizona, which I'm not that excited about. I don't really nope. give a fuck. I'm so disappointed in last week's game. Yeah, why? The refs? I'm drinking a happy dad, by the way. Yeah, by the, yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm fucking literally in here drinking Strategically a happy dad. Strategically turned. It, 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 so it looks like a white no, can from my happy I, I, No, I come into your fucking place. <laughs> you know, you guys have fucking balls, and there's a fucking happy dad sitting in this fucking thing. You know what the ironic thing is? You know why there's a bunch of happy dads? Because they send them. We, yeah. we, we're the worst. We just, <laughs> people send shit, and it's like, oh, are you promoting? Like, no, nah, they just dropped off a case on the front porch. Action and Park Media, send us all your things. We don't do enough of that. We should, but fuck, we just do whatever's you, in there. 
last time you <laughs> yep. were here, you did proper twelve, yep. and you you froze out the uh, you froze out the label. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I do remember that. Yeah, that was the, that was another unaired podcast <laughs> session we had. But the, the, that was a, that was a banger too. That was good. Nah, I got a little aggressive. Yeah, but it was good. I talked about the Nelk situation in a very aggressive way. Yeah, it was so new. It was so new. I don't give a yeah. fuck anymore. Like time has passed. Nobody cares anymore. Was, by the way, and was, at the end of the day, nobody gives a fuck. Bro, but at the end was, of the day, I'm not going to sit there and allow, you know, Kyle, who just released a show with Bradley Martin, and Bradley mm-hmm. asked him basically like about the Bob situation, and Kyle was just kind of like, I don't know. It was. It's sad. It's sad. The whole thing. You know, I think Bob thinks he got screwed over. No, I don't really think I got screwed over. I know I got you screwed You don't think over. any of that situation he's saying, it's sad that, like, it didn't work out because Bob and I were tight and it should have worked out. I feel like that's what he's saying. He's I, not saying I, was he tight, and I was tight and let it work out for a yeah. long, long, long time, uh-huh. for, for months. But when you give me your word on something, like I've repeated so many times, I feel like fucking a broken record saying all this stuff, and I really do want to put this to fucking bed and get uh-huh. this over with. But it's obviously just an ongoing topic that never really goes away on my end. So I wanted to do this podcast today to kind of just let everything out in a sense of letting you guys know exactly how everything happened, how the podcast started, how it formed, how all the points that he made in that viral video yep. saying and claiming, you know, 30%, the merch splits, all that stuff. I want to break that down one by one, and I want to go through it, and then everybody can form their own opinion at the end. Let me ask you this first. You've been on a bunch of shows lately. Do you think you've gotten your point of view across at all, or do you need your own platform to kind of spill the beans on this thing? Well, I'm just dumb. You know, mm-hmm. I'm just dumb and like I got to start caring more apparently because I do these shows, just these low end shows that don't have a lot of viewers. And I don't know why, but I just enjoy like. Is that like your kind of subconscious formi- formulating what you want to say? It was a fucking therapy session. I'm just asking. No, I, I just think that I enjoy doing smaller podcasts. I would do like a Rogan if I ever got an opportunity. I would do all that stuff. Uh-huh. But I just love this so much. I love podcasting so much. It's a shame that I haven't been able to stay is, is ex- consistent. That's what I wanted to start with. What happened? With what? Ripper Magoos. You 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 were posting well, a little bit. You had like four episodes, and you kind of fell off. Well, I think we go back further, Scotty. Is uh-huh. Ripper Magoos with Kevin, who yep. found the show and did it with us in the beginning at Action Park Media with uh, the three of us, uh, was extremely successful. And I think mm-hmm. a lot of these people, what they don't realize is in the podcast game, I, I wasn't a rookie, you know, and I came into that Full Send podcast, you know, you were spearheading it. Pretty pretty buttoned up and knowing my shit and knowing how to do podcasts because yeah. it wasn't my first fucking rodeo. You had some experience under your belt. I had some real experience. I mean, Kevin, we had a really successful show here. We we literally, and not just because the algorithm tricked it in the beginning, <laughs> we held number one for a while and bounced number two in the whole entire world in sports, and I was the only one promoting with a cell phone. We had no ad spend behind it. We had no other companies yeah. or influencers helping it. It was just purely my shit. In, in hindsight, do you wish you had just stuck to that path? Man, right. we would have made a fortune. We, we, we would have made a fortune, and it's not too late. I yeah. still want to continue talks about maybe doing something here because I've gotten a lot less. But not even, I'm not even with us. You know, Ripper Magoo's that first show. Do you wish you had just kept driving along? Mm. Come on, it w- I mean, it was hard because Bobby, you never, you never ever got comfortable in LA, and I didn't like LA. You never got comfortable. That's that in perfect LA. point. That's the biggest thing. If you came in and had a love affair with LA, I think would have been a much different. Yeah, story. I just didn't yeah. like my environment. I swear to God, I just didn't like the environment. We were running good, and uh, I just didn't like the environment. I don't know why I don't enjoy this place. I just don't function well out here. I just feel all bad things happen out here when I'm out here. It was also the COVID shit too. The COVID shit was pretty interesting. Remember how 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 fucking freaked out i got during i sure do the pan when the nba finally <laughs> shut down the first time yeah what did i do you were living with me at the time i mean you were telling us to go buy eight pound bags of rice yep. multiple bottles of water like yep. full-on survivalist mode yeah i took it to the next level did you bro. too Connolly? you seem like a guy who would take it to the next level like we i think we're very similar Kevin. Kevin. you got a level, bunker bro. up there man i i got i got food and water for days <laughs> i love it all right so let me let me let i want to get this over with real quick because i want to talk about other things by the way, I think after this podcast, when you're done, I'll never about speak this, about it I think again. You're, I think you're I, done. I, I this, will is, never this, speak. this is the final. No, no, this no. Is the I final want, thing. I don't want. I, I really don't want to. Here's the. I had no intention of doing this episode. Okay. But the thing is, I just saw like if he's going to talk about it and say it's just sad, man. On Brad's podcast, it's just so sad, you know. And I don't know. And behind the scenes, mm. Bob was a fucking wild man. Like I really want. I wish we had that right, video. So, so just to lay it out, before we came in here, Bob and I watched the video. 
and I feel like you walked away with it with a different idea than what I walked away. The from original the Kyle screaming video. No, the the last podcast you did with Brad. I walked away from that. Kyle goes, "I would like to. I would like to talk to Bob. It'd be good to talk to Bob." It was all sad to me. That's like I can't believe it fell apart and crumbled. This is one of my closest friends. I can't believe this happened. I would love to like figure it out and fix it. I don't think he's like <laughs> dude, trying to fuck you over, dude. That's how it felt to me. Dude, That's yeah. That's how it felt to of me. Of course, because guess what? That exact reaction that you have right now yeah. is what he wants. But I think it's true and validated, man. It's and not. I, all right. So I, here, here's. Well, hey, Bob, here's, here's what I would say. And, and I, again, I don't have a horse in this race. I'm literally like the guy looking at it from the outside. I should be your fucking sea biscuit. <laughs> but the way, the way you were um, emotional in the unairable podcast that we had. I think Kyle's first video when it all happened was kind of like that. But this video that we watched on the Bradley podcast, I, I didn't sense any venom. And, and to me, I don't know. Of course, I don't know Kevin, that. there's Maybe no venom like, because because there's no venom because what other choice does he have? He can't go at me I, for anything. I, no, I think you guys are both eye for eye guys. guys. Guys, here's the deal. Let's break this down. When Kyle made that video explaining and breaking down yes. the whole entire and all the deal but points. first, Bob. That, but that was, was an emotional one, too. No, no, right? but it doesn't, that's what on. I, but I want to focus on this because this is important. All right, hang on, though. That was in response to your video when you were on the stairs. I said you what? Went, pay you, me my money. You went nuclear. Nuclear, you, pay me my you money. You hit the fucking button. Right. You went nuclear buttons. Yes. And then he responded, and he He did go it, nuclear, He bro. went his <laughs> nuclear went button. He, but he went professional and, and was so innocent on just explaining everything. Well, that's he's very, very good at that, by the way. Okay, and I'll just say this. I've met let's, Kyle a handful of times. Let's he break it down. He doesn't seem like a fucking... I'm not saying... I'm just saying it's... Dude, it's, your appeal is you're fucking just joker, let me get to crazy. my Let me give it to my points. Okay. Okay? Go ahead. So if you watch that video, what Kyle had... First of all, we started our podcast. Yeah. Right? I just got done... Obviously, we had Ripper Goose, which is a very successful show. Yeah. And Kyle and I became friends. We discussed about doing a podcast together for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I was kind of pushing him on that we should do it together. And he was kind of hesitant. And then finally we agreed to do it. And Kyle had never done podcasts before. So I kind of worked with him throughout the whole entire process in the beginning to formulate a good pro podcast. And we obviously started off with Dana White, who was our first guest. Yeah. And uh, Dana was obviously their relationship, how they met as irrelevant, whatever it is, was, you know, I introduced the two of them uh -huh. on the infamous Abu Dhabi trip. Uh -huh. And uh, I just want to put that out there just in case. Uh, like, I think it's out there. Uh, oh, yeah, you're right. Dana did respond. It's, it's definitely out there. Which is something we'll get to later. I mean, he, he said 50K never. But at the end of the day, let's, let's just. Hour, like the third time. Let's just go. Well, I, I, well I, my point is that I would say to both of you, you and Kyle, you both fired day. off your, you both fired off your upset. The nukes. Nukes. What was the split? When, I'm just saying, you guys both <laughs> you guys both fired off your things when you when yeah. it was at the height of it, and now that it's calmed down a little bit, I think cooler heads have. Not, I don't want to say cooler heads have prevailed, but his his video with Bradley Martin felt a lot sort of. Dude, I, I wish you guys had the capability of Action Park Media here mm -hmm. to see a video, pause it, and then break it down. Because that, we don't have cups for the water on. cooler. <laughs> no, Bob. no. Listen, Kevin, you guys do a great job here. Bro, we just watched it, though. We, I can break it down with you I'm minute gonna, by minute. I'm going to pull the video up right now that Kyle made because I have some points here. I have all the notes. Okay. Why don't you, well, let, you, why can, don't you let me handle this? You can, you can go. All right. First off, he opens the video by saying that you are owed money. Why don't you talk on that? The opposite, he said. He said that I was not owed money. Was not owed money. Excuse me. Perfect. Interview let's, starting hot. Let's start there. Okay. Man, do I love that. Um, yes, I am. 1,000%. Yes, I All am right. owed money. Um, from, from what? How much are you owed? Yet alone, no matter what, uh, we were 1% holders, 1% uh, of the, the MetaCard. Okay. So the MetaCard that they had, it's, I think it's down 60% right now. Mm -hmm. Um. Those. I remember that you promoted it pretty heavily. I promoted it heavily, and also, oh, did you get on? Did were I, you promoting I, it? I promoted it heavily because I believed that they would do great things with the MetaCard, mm -hmm. and I just haven't seen much traction. And I actually kind were of were you paid on the MetaCard though? I got one per one point two five percent of the MetaCard, which I think equated to, I mean, they made thirty million. But I'm also making, you know, every time it you know it sells, you get ten percent. Yeah. So every time that MetaCard like does a transfer or whatever the fuck it is, full send gets ten percent. Yeah. Can you hook that up to Bravado? Yeah. <laughs> 
The our, our first <laughs> edit of the day. <laughs> no edits. Our first edit no of the day. Edits. I'm just kidding. No, all right. So back to MediCard. You have 1% so of have, MediCard. So, so that was funny. Like, well, the $1.2 million that he claimed that I made, A, uh, from the podcast. Was, was that factored in? That was factored in as okay. well. So that wasn't just from the podcast. as MediCard. Now, here's the deal. Is that a lot of money? Fucking, of course it's a lot of money. Yep. Dude, that's a lot of money. Uh-huh. But with successful shows comes a lot of money. Right. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, the the main problem was for us was the payment schedule, the Uh payments that were made didn't make sense. The numbers didn't make sense based on like what we would look at YouTube, look at Snapchat, see what these people are getting paid. And when we asked to, which when you have a partnership with somebody, Mm -hmm. okay, when Mm -hmm. you have a partnership with somebody, you should be able to see what the fuck, especially if you have 30%. Yeah. Supposedly. Of the ad revenue. Of the ad revenue, right? Yeah. And you simply ask for I, five months for a copy it's, and a breakdown of the ad revenue. Mm-hmm. Why aren't they showing it to you? Have Have you ever stepped back and look at yourself and think that maybe you are the problem with all of it? No. Have you no, never? Not one no, time. No, dude, t- dude, 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 dude. It's so simple. Why can't I, why can't I see a you dashboard? You said it. You said why it. Why can't I see a dashboard? Why can't I see a breakdown? Before, why can't I see how much no, money hey, this show hey, made and how much I'm, I'm p- supposed to be paid? Let me get my point across. At the beginning of that ramble, you go, when we start to make a bunch of money off of a podcast, which you've been involved in multiple podcasts to make a bunch of money, yeah, that's when the issues always happen. Of course. When money gets involved, people yeah. start fucking around. Our it rev share, complicate things. Our rev share split was 70-30. You know what's funny? What? Do you know who else got some money off that that, did, that was not in the contract? Shots, uh, <laughs> Shot Studios, John Shahidi. Okay. So the 70-30 split that Kyle claimed, Yeah. well, what about that money that went to John Shahidi? Was that... That I didn't know about. That money went to John Shahidi that I didn't know about. But that, you, no, you, no, 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 no. You signed a contract. The contract doesn't involve John Shahidi. So you're <laughs> saying that you're saying he went outside the contract and that the contract is null and void. That is, he, dude, I'm he breaking it. Scotty, there. Scotty, you don't understand. I'm breaking it down. I'm playing one devil's by, advocate. You don't we, need to. There we, is no we, devil's we advocate. We can have a normal conversation. I'm having a normal conversation. You're getting so the angry with me. Is, I have nothing to do so with it. So the split is 70-30 on ad revenue, right? Okay. Okay. So that means Snapchat, YouTube, steak, Anything that's advertised in the show, I should get 30% of, right? Yes. When we started that show originally, okay, it was Happy Dad and Full Send that was being promoted. Those were the ads on the show. Separate from audio to YouTube? Everything was Happy You're saying if they're only promoting their products, how are you going to get 30%? Whoa, 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 I'm not there yet. I'll break it down. What about? No, 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 no. I my, was, my question is for audio. You guys were running through Megaphone. You had ads there. You're getting 30% of that. I don't... This is so amazing. Scotty, I don't fucking know. Well, because because I never, can't see anything. They never he's opened the he, I he's never got the... I never supposed looked. to get 30%. He doesn't, he doesn't know what 30% is. Who the fuck is knows what 30% see. is when you ask them delicately for six months right, and just okay. look and review it? So you're saying the podcast is making a shit ton of money. You have no idea where the money's coming from. I'm just getting aimless wires for like right. this, that, this, inconsistently, okay, not on time, all yeah, over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey guys, this seems a little whatever. Can we just... Can you just show us the dashboard? Okay. Can you show us the Snapchat? Can you show us the okay. YouTube? Just to see what this is making the show, yeah, that we're partners Right on. So you and Hiller at the time go. You go to who? John. We go to John. Who okay. passes? Well, that's us. my question, Bob. Is it you personally that calls John and says, "Hey, John, I'd love to get a peek at this." Or you, you definitely have a little fire in there. Yes, of course, because yeah. it, and especially when it came to the point where it was like John to Kyle, Kyle back to Sammy, Sammy back to John. Well, John handles that. Well, Kyle handles that. Well, Sammy handles that. Right. And it, but it, I was getting danced around for months. But also, don't you think that Kyle is purposely doing that because he's talent? He's got his representation. Let's let representation talk to representation so that the friendship doesn't necessarily have to be affected by any of this. But what is he doing? What do you mean? Because Kyle They're is not giving his... me a solution. They're, I, they're I under, walking me around I, on a leash. I, I understand that. But instead of you getting on the phone all jazzed up to whoever you're talking to, you have your representative call we, yeah, for Oh, you. Oh, that's happened. But you, I know you. you no, no, you, no, no. You like to represent yourself. That's that's. If I'm representing myself, or I fucking Johnny Cochran representing me, it's the uh, same he's thing. He's dead, that, but if theoretically uh, he did die, figuratively he did die. I want to just Johnny say real Cochran. quickly off do you, the bat. Do you, rest do you in get, peace, Johnny Cochran. Cochran. Rest get, in peace, Johnny Cochran. You get what I'm trying to say, though, is that instead of you firing, you have your representation. Scott, my, all right, all right, I'll, I'll break it down for you. My representation probably sent 100 emails. Okay. 100. And so you got fed up with it, with the not responding, and you're like, I got to take I was very, very tolerant and patient for months and months and months. Uh-huh. But I was also told at the beginning when Kyle and I first started, and this is where I take a little fault, is that we always had this 
exciting discussion together. Yeah. And this is where morally it hurt me. Because outside of contracts, because I'm not a fucking attorney. I don't know fucking fine print. Mm-hmm. And I had some fucking guy do it that I'm obviously mad that I had fucking do the deal. Yeah. Um, but I was told in my head that I was told by Kyle that we, you own 30% of the show. So when we sell to Spotify, I mean, that's when we, we sell to well, Spotify. Well, that's the question. Is it 30% of the revenue well, gonna, or 30% no, yeah, of the was, show? So, so, so the difference. contract says, that's what I'm telling you, the contract says 30% of the but revenue. But in that first video but that the, he listen, put out, he says you have zero ownership He looked of the me show. in the, this is me telling you man to man. That we had several conversations. It's such a big clause on a contract that there's no way yeah. anyone looks this over and go and misses that you own thirty percent of that's, the show. That's that's the way I unless you had the worst lawyers in the history. I of had lawyers. the worst fucking guys apparently, or I don't even know if it was a backdoor deal. To be honest with you, I don't know. I'm serious. Right, that's tinfoil hat. No, I'm being serious, brother. I'm telling you guys the truth. That's my Bob, fault. You've read, I take responsibility. You've read so many contracts. I take How could you responsibility fuck that up? for the 30% ownership. I do. I take, right. That's fine. But I will tell you this. Kyle and I used to talk all the time. And t- he used to tell me, yeah, when we sell to Spotify for $100 yeah. million, you know, I'm like, I'm getting $30 million. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's my fault for doing the All fucking right. contract so, shit. But that that that's beside the point. That's but hang on, hang on. So you got you're under the impression that you get thirty percent of the show. You own it. You and Kyle yeah. are such close friends. That's They're, me being fucking an idiot. But, but there's at no point where you guys are talking on the phone. You're hanging out. You're having a few drinks where you're like, "Yo, I own thirty percent of the it, show." It was always the same answer. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And then so fine. like, if it's sold to Spotify for hundred million, yeah. you got a thirty. That was pack the, that was the, that was a discussion we had so many yeah. times. But is that after the contract has been signed? After and the you, contract has are, been no, signed, no, you guys are hot. Yeah, and you're pumping. Up. Yeah, and okay. then finally it was like right when I okay. said, you know, you told me right when we started to get really hot and heavy and shit. Yeah, I was like, you you fucking told me, man. You honor your fucking word. You told me so, eye to eye, and he said, read the contract, and that, bro. That's what my next question was going to be. At what point was he like, oh, by the way, you don't own thirty percent? Are you guys in negotiations? Has shit gone sour? When do you find out? Oh shit, I don't own thirty percent of the show. When does that moment happen? It was late, right before, probably a couple weeks before I left. And that was because you are in negotiations. That's because I really pressed them and said, I'm sick and tired of your bullshit telling me I'm a part of Happy Dad, that uh-huh. you're giving me equity in Happy Dad. That's and a whole other side. Yeah. By the way, that's the, that's a big thing, too, is okay. that I was told at the beginning I'm a part of Happy Dad. I'm getting a 1% of Happy Dad. Uh-huh. They told me we had emails exchanged, not with specifics on it, on on the email, and but like whatever. But then it went from, like, all of a sudden now we have to put money in, and it'll match it. And it went on for months and months and months. They told me because – because guess what? The ad revenue, right – was important to me. That's where you make all your money. So if I get staked to do a fu- kind of, I mean, I, if I'm you and I'm, that's where, and, I, Scott, and I'm that's worried where, about. No, I'm worried about the big sale, the thirty percent. I'm worried about the long term of the show. I'm not. Worried oh, exactly. Oh, yeah. I'm there you go. Worried about Ex- there you go. Exactly. Yes, that's true too. So, but yes, that's a good point. So, wh- which one were you worried about? But, well, I, that's why I was so lenient for a I while. I feel like you soiled yourself on the back end of the thirty percent because you were so worried about the thirty percent of ad revenue. Scott, you wanted short term. It didn't matter. I was okay with the thirty percent of ad revenue and. Uh-huh. Not making a lot of money because I knew and thought that I had 30% ownership of the show until I found out, right? Mm-hmm. But the 30% of ad revenue that drove me crazy was this, is I'm out here supporting Happy Dad. I'm out there drinking Happy Dad every fucking day. I'm plastered with Still Happy are. Dad. They're, they're, I'm not <laughs> drinking this shit. This is all you have fucking here. And so it's plastered all over me, written all over me from top to bottom, yeah. and they're just repurposing my name, likeness, image, all in this Happy Dad thing. But I was okay with it for months and months and months because I was told that I was a part of Happy Dad, and I had equity in it. I was a piece of it. And they were just like, we're figuring out the paperwork. I have all the emails, dude. I have fucking everything. Yeah. I have fucking everything. So if this thing wants to go somewhere, I have fucking everything yeah. documented. And I don't like to take that course of action. But, yeah, we do have a sit down coming up to figure this out. So I was told for months and months and months and months that I was a part of it. Part Walked around, walked yeah. around, danced around on a leash and a leash and a leash. I, I was never getting anything. I was never – they had no attention. What they were doing is just keep going. Yeah. They were just keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. And you know what's funny? I was making a $7,500 talent fee an episode. Yeah. When they're saying they're paid for my transportation, my flights and everything, it was – the flights are fine, pulling teeth. I never – they never paid for one Uber. No – that's small details. Mm. But they never fucking did <laughs> any of that fucking shit you, whatsoever. You probably didn't send but, your But receipt, you're but. sitting there. I cannot collect 30% of – anything when they're all advertising their own products. So this 30% of ad revenue is irrelevant unless I have equity in the product. No part of you is feeling like this is a little bit spoiled. Scott, I built this show with them from the ground up. You I didn't should... build happy dad. 
Happy Dad, I did not. That's their own fucking thing. Happy Dad, I did not build, but Happy. Yeah, but you're you're trying to get that's the, why rubby fingers all over Happy Dad. Why right? not just worry about the podcast? Because the po- because because this you, takes away from my ad revenue. They're only this takes away from my thirty percent ad revenue. They're, they're only, not going to take Budweiser because they I get had it. This, so I get I'm it. making zero. I get it. So you're, what you're saying is that they're advertising Happy Dad on the podcast, but not cutting you in on the back thirty percent of the revenue on ads for Happy Dad. You're not talking about thirty percent ownership of of Happy Dad. Right. 30% ownership of Happy Dad, the advertising. What he's saying is that if his, if, his money, Adver- if his money is 30% Understood. of advertising and they're selling their own products, Correct. there's no advertising. How, how, much, there you how, go. how much does the Happy Dad spot cost on Full Send Podcast? So we, we figured that out. So it was, okay. you know, we got, I brought them an ad for $150,000 at one point. Okay. So this company wants to sponsor an episode, multiple episodes at $150,000. Mm-hmm. What would that mean for me? Fair. 40 grand, right? Of course. That would be amazing. Yep. Nope. We can't do it. So they're essentially no. Nope, we can't do it because we have Happy Dad and Full Send. So what? But but that sucks for Bob. But of course it does. So <laughs> what Full Send essentially is doing is advertising their own brands internally, not paying for it, and then you as a talent, kind of an outside figure, aren't getting anything on that back end. Yes, and yet I'm utilizing all my relationships, okay. bringing on my biggest people, my biggest weapons, doing everything I can for them, like right. Kyle said. Kyle said on the Tyson podcast, okay. you can't take those words right. back. Bob does so much for full By set. the way. I and he al- he's also saying, if like, he's it, pushing Happy Dad, which he's not making 30% from, of course. if he owns 1% okay. of the company. Here, here, here's, my, here's, here's, here's my question then. Makes total sense to me. Does it? You, yes, it really does. You bring that, you say that to Kyle. What What is his response? Well, that's what I was going to say, Bob. And real, and off of Scotty's question, I want you to try to uh, apply th- this answer. When you first go to him, do you go to him like a bat out of hell, which you tend no, to do? No, no, no. Or do you say, hey, Kyle, no, can I not, talk to you for a second? No, it was, it was for months and months of the buddy-buddy. Hey, can I just talk to you? Can you just... Cool, calm, and collected? Oh, my God. So cool. The only time I got nuclear, dude, yeah. the only time I really got nuclear... At the end? ...was at the tail end, oh. when I realized I was getting fucked. Right. What set you that off I realized on that Instagram that, day? That I realized that, that it was just a compiled amount of shit, and it was just from so many people DMing messages me, making me the bad guy. Yeah. When all I did was pl- pour my blood, sweat, and tears into their brand and helping their brand and introducing them to people that I knew on my end and bringing them whoever it is. Yeah. And they also said that I gained massive exposure. I was going to ask, how much do you value the Nelk audience? I love all the people that I interact with yeah. on, their, on their fan base. They're great. I've got a lot of people that they're fans. Of them. But as a value to Bob and what you're trying to accomplish, I've lost, that a, was that important to you? I lost heavily in exposure game with them. No way. Scott, Impossible. Go- Google my name. How? Google. You're getting more eyeballs. Eyeballs ever also don't with really matter. Of course it matters. And I had, bro, do you understand prior Me. to signing out with Nelk, I had a really big show. Mm-hmm. I had a really big audience. When I go out and I walk down the street, I get fucking people say what's up to me all the fucking time. I know it wasn't Nelk, bro. People, Come on. So it was it wasn't Nelk. It wasn't Nelk is massive. It wasn't Nelk. Bro. Yeah. It wasn't Nelk that got me to where I am. I'm Bob Mennery. I built my shit, bro. I no. built my shit to 10 million fucking people across the internet that know who the fuck I am yeah. through my shit. I have a core good strong fucking audience, people that I interact yeah. with every day. Yes, I got that fucking younger demo and I got those people, but at the end of the day, the way that they chose to handle giving me exposure uh-huh. was so disrespectful. And that starts with Colby Covington and Jorge Masvidal, well, I, which was that night that he got jumped. And Kyle went out to the internet in front of millions of people and yeah. tarnished my reputation because I value myself in being a person that I have all these big relationships because right. nothing goes wrong. And the, on the my easy watch. question is like, how much of that is content? Because you see with Aaron, the content that who within. benefits from? They, bene- they benefit directly. Not me. But so do you. And if, I get, if that shit goes super viral and it, it gets more people to If that shit goes show, super viral, Scott, my life was a nightmare during that time. You don't think you overreacted to that at all? No, I had, like, serious death threats. I had, like, gangs fucking messaging me. You get me. Death, death threats all the time. No, not like that. I mean, I remember I messaged Usman, the UFC fighter, and, and Usman was basically like, yo, bro, is this real? Yeah. And I'm like, dude, you really think this is real? No, I'm not setting anybody up. Like, it yeah. just happened because we were at the place and we all just had our social media out and it's just a bad place, bad time. And he's like, dude, that's dangerous, bro. You like, you got to tell him to cut this shit out. Yeah. And I told him to. You don't, bro, it's, you don't fuck around with that shit. You don't go. And then when you Google, think about this, right? Well, that's who the Nelk no, boys are. They I don't fuck give around. a fuck. They that's, fuck around. That's great. So that's like, you, but that's you no should res- know that going in. That's no, res- no, because I also told him before, just don't fuck with me. Like, let me just do my job. Let me show up. Let me get, help you guys. Yeah. Don't fuck with me. Like I'm a respect, I'm respected out there in a sense, 
you know, with with why I have some huge relationships is because I don't let shit like that happen uh-huh. on my watch or if I'm involved in something. And so then when you Google my name now, if I want to go and do an interview with somebody, like say a Morgan Wallen, and you Google Bob Mentory, the first headline you read is Bob Mentory set up yeah. Colby Covington to get jumped. What yeah. does that do to people now? Guests that, that want to feel comfortable when well, they come into a room and do shit. That's they, another, they, that's no, another, they fucked me. It's another thing Kyle brought up is that he's claiming that, like, they got a majority of the guests. If you had been getting all the guests and all these relationships, most people know Scotty, how you Scotty, how did the show start? It started off with Dana White, mm-hmm. and then it, it went to... Once the guests, the big guests show up, it writes itself. You can get anybody. I agree. Nelk was very X-rated. Not mm. that brand friendly. My goal for them was to help them be a little more mainstream. I wanted to get yeah. them on ESPN with my relationships like Jimmy Pitaro, president of ESPN. Like Dana, who they already had at that point. Now, they didn't need me to have Dana. Yeah, they yeah. already had him at that point. They built a good relationship with him. Um, with the Adam Schefters who can tweet them out. And all those different people in mainstream media that can make yeah. them good for this R-rated fucking Nelk YouTube page that they are. Mm-hmm. And so basically, um, you know, the first episode we did Dana because that made sense. And then we, you know, Afghanistan had fallen, and I was like, you know, instead of Kyle and them probably taking the, I think, with if I hadn't been involved in the beginning, it would have been a different show with influencers and shit. Yeah. I don't think they would have been so mainstream. Uh, we went, you know, the guy who, uh, Donald Trump Jr. and the guy who killed Osama bin Laden, because I wanted, I, I was like, Kyle, let's make this like a timely, I always wanted yeah. to make timely podcasts. Yeah, yeah. Let's make it a timely podcast, and let's have those two guys on the show and talk about why Afghanistan fell. It was something that was current that was happening. Yeah, I mean, I think your biggest commodity to that show was bringing the creativity, and what, whether that's timely shit or your comedy. Yeah. Like, you're, you were invaluable and are invaluable on that show to this day. Yeah. And I think that now they're getting the biggest people in the world, which is fine, because the show's going to write itself. But at the end of the day, there was, there was like, brick by brick it was built. Totally. And so then, like, you know, when, like, <laughs> I think people are just don't realize how hard it is to get Antonio Brown. He rips his shirt off, runs out of the field, and it's the most talked about thing in the world because our minds mm. move fast. Yeah. And working, like, 90 hours nonstop so, to so talk to can, Antonio. Br- bring, to get, bring me through the process. He rips his shirt off. He rips his shirt it. off. I call Kyle. I'm like, we're getting him. Got to get him. Let's go. Uh-huh. And Kyle's not going to lift the finger. doesn't do anything with that. He doesn't know how to fucking do that. What Guess do who does? A, a he simple, doesn't know how to fucking get to him. No. A, a simple DM slide? I mean, sure. They weren't doing it. Okay, the, so he wasn't that, firing off. In the, so beginning, you take in the, the beginning, I was just handling all every all the guests. I was bringing in everybody for them in the beginning. Yeah. And then they want to claim that. That all these guests that came in after and shit like that, that's fine. They can do that. But, like, the, the brick by brick was built mm-hmm. by me and, me and Kyle, and I put in a lot of hours. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the fucking— uh, Where are you guys at now? When's the last time you've talked to him? I haven't talked to him. In how long? A couple months? Two months? Three months? I don't know. Half a year? I don't know. Long time. It doesn't matter. But I also any, want to go to anything else. The other places I was making my money. Yeah. Podcast merch. 50%. 50%. Sounds great, right? Yeah. Sounds amazing, huh? Yep. That sounds awesome. Uh-huh. Podcast merch. Can't wait. I'm going to promote fucking fullsend.com because my podcast merch is on there. You have any fucking podcast shirts and stuff that we launched together? You guys had a few. I think we had... Did we have one? No, you had... The you full had, send sweatshirt? You had a zapped line out. You had the full send podcast shirt we out. Had, well, what's the full send? We had the full send podcast one one shirt and hoodie, one sweatshirt. Hoodie and a shirt, yeah. 9,000 fucking that was full... Also, you're not, also fucking four weeks into the show right now. No, no, no. This is during the whole course of the time. I mean, it does, we, we launched... One shirt. Uh, were, you, were you like, yo, we but this is the, were you like, let's yes. put more designs I'm like, out. why are Come we on, not, why go, are we not doing go. podcast merch? I earn here, guys. What about Ripper Magoo's? Like, did you ever have a conversation where you're like, can I put my shit out? Yes. On Thank you, side? Scott. Thank you. Bang. There we go. Fuck yeah. I forgot <laughs> about that. Yeah. Hey, guys, if I'm not earning on Happy Dad and I'm not earning on the other stuff, can you at least let me build my own brand a little bit too and wear my own shit and promote my yeah. own stuff then, guys? Because you're not, you're dancing me around here. You're dancing me around there. Uh-huh. Can I wear something on the show? And there was one time, I think, that I just didn't even tell them, and I wore something uh-huh. that was just an advertisement that I wore. And they gave me a lot of shit for it, and I was just like, well, I'm not earning in any of these areas. Like, it's not fair. I can't wear, really, any of my own shit. They didn't allow me to do any of that stuff. Really? Yeah. I wasn't allowed to do any always, of that. It was always, all full send, push, always, push, push. I always heard you could go out and do your own podcast. You could do your own merch. You could do whatever you want. I was allowed to do my own podcast. I was allowed to do a secondary podcast yeah. if I wanted to, but it was just strongly, strongly advised against. Why is that? 
it was just strongly advised against because they didn't want me. Obviously, they wanted everything with them. Do you think because it, you, maybe you get distracted by the other side podcast, they wanted your full involvement? Yeah, yeah, yeah probably all that stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah, and that's kind of fair. But, no? but then even the merch thing, the podcast merch, it's just it was shady business. Like, for instance, like I for months there was this shirt that launched with Donald Trump's face on it and my face on it. Yeah, and was a podcast shirt technically. It was my face on the shirt. So you're saying that, and they I were... didn't get anything. And I was, I looked at it finally after months. I'm like, I didn't even make any money on this thing. And is that because they're like, well, that's not podcast merch. That's full send merch. I, I think that that's what they originally. They just, right? they just hoped I didn't see it. I just can't see this happening. It's so, your podcast is so successful. You and Kyle are such close dude, friends. Like, dude, 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 why, dude, dude, why, dude. I'll, why I'll show you. Listen shit? to me. Why would they I do swear that? to God, if this goes further, uh-huh. the th- good thing is all this will be public record. And every fuck- do you think Kyle's sweating a little because he's like, no, he Bob's got fuck. Bob's got me on this though. Like, no, do you think, I don't. Do you I don't think he's this is truly, the thing. I don't got him. Do you because, think he's truly crooked though? That's that would be crooked business. I think absolutely one hundred percent that that they in in with me, uh-huh. they engage in some crooked activities. One thousand percent. But there's right. some. But there can be gray area at times. There can right? be like what you're talking about with merch. Like what falls under what merch and this and that. What about wait wait. It, do you think, Kevin, I just want to have a question for you if you don't mind me asking. Do you think I should maybe be compensated or taken care of if my face is on a shirt? <clears throat> Excuse me. Of course. What? Of course. Your name and likeness? Yeah, of course you well, should. If my face is on the shirt that for, they're selling, do you think I should get any piece hey, of that? Hey, by the way, I... If I, my face is on it? Of course you oh, should. Okay. Of course you should. I, I do victory merch, and I go, yo, Kev, I'd love to do an RE Gold shirt. Like, can we do that? Kev goes... Well, no, not really, because, like, I, I, you know, that's Piven. What, what, I can't cut Piven in on that shirt. Mm. It's the same thing. So, of course. Right. So that's my problem. And then finally, when I addressed it to them, they were like, oh, yeah. Uh, and it was during a time where I was really pressing them hard and, like, being like, dude, don't fuck with me. And they finally <laughs> Full they finally, they finally caved in. But, I mean, yeah. payments were late all the time, which I didn't really have a problem with. Uh, so how did payments come in? Just random, uh, random, payments, random, and that's why random cyclical. numbers, and that's why it was so random that it was like, "Hey guys, but, can we see some sort of something?" So Kyle says on that video, seven seven point five k an episode. Did you get seventy five hundred every week? Because you guys were going weekly. No, weekly it was all episodes. inconsistent, which I don't have a problem with. I, I don't mind that. Uh-huh. I don't. I don't. It's not really that big of a deal to me. Like I had, but did those payments come in all the time? Seven point five, not a consistent basis. Like there you was, you didn't get that every week. No, no. End of the month, every two weeks. It was set to be on certain times. Like, I think it was we were supposed to be played every month, I think, on oh, everything. Okay. But it wasn't like sometimes they missed by weeks. Uh-huh. Like, you know. So even even the most basic of payments, 7.5 yeah. per episode, was late or it was a different figure than what it should they have were, been? They were occasionally late, late yeah. Okay. Yeah, which is which I don't really don't have a problem with. Like I don't. Well, no, I, I think yeah, that, because well, there's a billing cycle and like there's a lot no, of no, 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 as long as he's no. paid in full. No, on Kev, it. I disagree. That that's the most basic of payments. That one should come in every two weeks at at fifteen k. That yeah. one should never miss. It should be the same number every two weeks if you're doing yeah. two. Ep- if you're doing and then this is the other thing too. So this is the best part too is when Stake came involved and started to sponsor them. I think they gave him one hundred fifty thousand dollars an episode, right? Huh. So they started promoting Stake, and so I'm sitting on the podcast. And again, it's like pulling teeth. I'm like, okay, guys, so so I'm getting thirty percent of this, and they're like, well, technically, it's not really a podcast advertisement; <laughs> it's like a brand thing and uh, whatever. I'm like, fuck you, fuck you, and 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 they did, and finally, I had to just literally just go so hard on them to to even get paid on that deal. And we got three episodes of stake. But I think what ultimately happened at the end was they wanted to push me out once that money came in. Yeah. They knew that we had already built the show up. They knew that the show was already going good. They knew they had to pay me 30% of ad revenue coming forward. Mm -hmm. And they knew that they were going to have, they got a big, big, big sponsorship from a gambling company. Yeah. And they said, hey, you know what? What's easier to just cut Bob out or actually pay him his 30% that he deserves after he built all that? I just, there's no way. There's no way they were like, let's, Kyle's like, let's cut Bob out. He, Scott, dude, you you're such a big character. He knows how important you are Scott, to the show. Scott, I just don't think so he's why like, was it so hard money. to, co- yeah, dude. I just don't. Are you like, I don't see, I don't see that. But do you know, you don't know him. You don't know their business. You don't know, you, you didn't go through it. Talk to, Zach's a good person to talk to. He was with me through the whole thing. Scotty, I wouldn't uh, bullshit. I, I'm not bullshitting. All right, here, here's my, here's my In the question. slightest. I'm here's, telling you the God's honest truth. You have all this infrastructure. You have this great show. What's the difference between 1.3 million and 1.6 million to you? That's, that's invaluable. 
If that's I, like, I don't hypothetically say that's the missing money. If, it, if you have if, all this shit going well, for you, is that 300k really worth like exploding the fucking ship? My up? stress level was an all time high with them because I was being danced around so much with I was never allowed to know anything. And yeah. I'm a partner. And that in the drove show. you crazy. That drove me crazy. I was just like, bro, I don't know. Like, how weird is this? Like, yep, this is 30% right here. Here you go, Bob. And I'm like, all right, cool. Can you guys send a breakdown? Yeah. Where that 30% came from? I'd like to know how much was made from Snapchat, YouTube, yeah. whatever, blah, blah, blah. They never gave it to me to this day. They won't give me yeah. it. They won't I, give I, me it. Is that not a red flag? Why won't know. they give me the access to see what the show earned? Because I'm technically, if I'm own 30%, why can't I just look? I, you should be able to. It's a set but standard number. Unless something's going on, why can't I just look? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, at the at the same time, it's obviously it was kind of a tricky contract. There's so many verticals. There's so many different fucking things involved with it. Yeah, and I they guess would that's give you- what I was gonna say. Like, it could get gray when you're talking about the merch all and these things. things. Things a lot of a lot of business going on. Like, but- did you ever go to Kyle and you're like, "Yo, let's lock in for just a set rate of X amount"? Yes. And he, he said I no. did everything, Scott, and you'd be proud of me, you guys. Yeah. Because I'm usually a fucking uh-huh. maniac. I was so calm, cool, and collected through that whole process up until the yeah. last month. So calm, cool, and collective. I swear to God, once again, if this goes anywhere uh-huh. between me and them, uh-huh. Why are you you'll the have all this fucking, <laughs> you'll have all the information because it'll be public. It'll be public fucking information. All of this has to go public if it goes really legal. Yeah. Is that kind of what you want so people can make their own decision? I'm not going to sit here and look like the fucking idiot anymore. Yeah. I'm not. And I'm gonna. I, I have to stand. Take a stand for myself. My name's been fucking dragged through the mud on the fucking internet. Uh-huh. My fucking, you know, not being transparent with anything that went on there, and not being involved at all, knowing that because I was a partner, by the way. Mm. I built that thing with them, yeah. and I just didn't get any answers on anything. What Bob, a- Bob, real quick. So if they said that you were gonna get that percentage off any brands that you were gonna sell. Did they end up just running Happy Dad ads and never ran any kind of other brands? Yeah. 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 They didn't run anything. We brought them ads to do and said, hey, guys, this would put some money in my pocket. And it would put fucking 80 grand in your pocket. I used to hit you up all the time. I was like, what ads are you running? Are you trying to run ads nope. on the show? But you know what? But you know what? It was okay, was though. Because, weird. But you know what? It was okay, though. I didn't have a problem with it because I was what? Promise Happy Dad equity. I knew that when this sold, yeah. I'd have a good little payday that would make up for all those rainy days. And guess what? Zero. How is it? Shit. <laughs> All right. What What about this? How do you and Kyle get in a room and try to talk? We're doing yeah, that. Is there a path? Yeah, we're gonna be. This, we're gonna be yeah, doing that. Not, yeah, not we're gonna be from, doing. Uh, not from. You know what I'm talking about. Is there? Is there a friendly? way I have for you guys no to problem with with Kyle at all if he just makes it right because I think he has some other people in his ear and shit. I, I feel like if you had the right people in the room and you and Kyle went out to dinner, it would be a productive dinner. Yep. Done that 45 times. I, I mean, maybe you didn't have the right people by you. Scooter Braun? Scooty? Scooty Braun is not going <laughs> to go near that. Scooty Braun is no, not going to go I'm serious. How do you go in there without any animosity, hostility, and try to have a fucking I don't man-to-man think that, like, conversation about shit? We, I, that's, dude, Scott, I would tell you. you just don't want that anymore. I've done that many times. I've done it many times. It's, it's, it's impossible because they're, they don't cave. They're not caving. They're not showing me the books. What do you want them to cave on? Show me the books. And they, that's what it is. So Show you, me the so books. You, so you go into that conversation, yes. and you're just like, Kyle. If you're shit. gonna, going to claim that you don't owe Bob any money uh-huh. or anything like that, because I'll, I'll put everything I got on this, uh-huh. everything I got, I'm all in. Okay. You want to claim that? Put your money where your mouth is. And show open up everything. And, and you think Kyle's truly like, I can't do that because I've ripped him off for the tunes of hundreds of thousands of dollars. I can't answer that for you. I think only Kyle can answer that. Well, you obviously think that's true. I think that otherwise there, we're not I here. There are some serious discrepancies. Okay, that's all I'll say. I will tell you that um, it's a very unfortunate situation. The entire thing. What's um, the best uh, end to this for you? The best end to this is we settle up what's fair and on what we I deserve on that fucking show. Yeah, I get paid my fucking money. Okay, and then we go our separate ways, uh-huh. which I think would probably be the really? the case. What I, if- I wouldn't want that. I'd love to go back on the show, but it's like I don't think that. After all this shit goes on, there's no way. Like, John Shahidi and those guys are not going right. to fucking... It's, we went at it too hard at each other. It's not going to happen. I mean, I, I, I would go right back into, you know, commando mode. Here's, here's 300,000. Let's run it back. Whatever yeah, the, whatever the, the right, fucking... Whatever, the, whatever that number is, and, and, you know, and when he says he doesn't owe me money, that, you know, we're still owning that Metacard, uh-huh. by the way. That, those payments stopped. So that's... You owe me money there. Do you really want to have any ownership of that Metacard? I did everything I could for that fucking project. But no, looking at it now, do you actually want payment from that Metacard? 
Uh, do I want payment from the Medicard? I don't care really about the Medicard yeah. as much as in a sense of I gave my all to that thing. I was in the Discord. Anybody that bought a Medicard that was in that Discord yeah. can speak very, very, very highly, I think, of my performance when it came to supporting the Medicard. I, think, I don't know shit about it. Yeah, nobody else was really active in that thing, and I was pretty active, you know, in doing whatever I could to kind in of... In terms of what, like fan engagement? You know, fan engagement and just kind of like... Is that one of the things? Like, you yeah. buy a Medicard, you get to talk to I don't know. They, they on the Discord or whatever the They fuck? said they were going to do all these full-send lounges and gyms and all this stuff. You yeah. know how the NFTs work, so oh. I don't know if there's any timeline around that, but I know it's just not doing well right now, so, yeah. I mean, they got to just pick up pick it up a little bit, spend a little more time on it to bring it back up because there yeah. were people that invested some dollars yeah. uh, in, into that thing. So hopefully they bring it back up because, yeah, my name is attached to it. I had yeah. one, one point, 1% of the project. Yeah. And then, uh, dude, outside of Full Send and Nelk and all that shit, like, why don't you just keep doing your thing? Why don't you put out pods and, and I love this. I, I love doing this. I, I, I do. It's just more, you know, um, I don't know yet. I got to figure that out. That's all. You, you you partially love these battles, no? A little bit. Maybe a little piece of me likes. I think these I think you like the war. Yeah, I mean, I like. Li it's just it's just like because when I'm passionate about something, I'm very passionate. Well, when about you it. feel wronged, you're fucking bulldog. When right? I feel wrong, I feel wrong because it's just I put in so much effort and just to be like so like a piece of meat. Uh huh. So it's just like you know. That's that, why I've, I've just never been in that situation where I've just felt so irrelevant. And That's why the contract negotiations and how it went south it amazes me because I know how hard you worked on it. I know how much effort you as put into it. As long as you guys know how how hard I worked on that fucking shit. I think everyone does, and I think everyone more more so appreciates the talent that you brought to the show. The show is not the same without you. There, there's not a, nearly as much energy. Yeah, the show definitely went. I think, in my opinion, a little downhill. But I, there's a lot of people that say the opposite. So you know, I can't really. Most people have the wrong opinion. It just is what it is. But, yeah, I mean, that's basically there, that. And then, um, you know, it was uh, it was just – it was a, I'm done now with it. I think I'm just going to put it in the past and not really engage with it anymore unless, obviously, if they want to fucking run their mouth with anything. I'm going <laughs> to behind the scenes fucking handle it how I would. Yeah. But, you know, I knew going into this – and flipping out and shit that I would lose some relationships, which I have, and mm -hmm. that people would be afraid to touch me and people would be afraid to engage in me because of such a loose cannon I am. But again, that's just who I am. And I'll always stand up for what I believe in. And I will fucking just be very vocal at times about things that I'm passionate about. And uh, you'll never, anybody can take that away from me as much, you know, fucking, um, as much as you try and get in my head and tell me not to do it. Mm -hmm. because there's consequences behind that, I don't give a fuck because I, I take a stand for what I believe in. And I know that I was wronged, and it's a very, it was a very simple fix that could have been fixed with just some transparency and some just honesty, and then we could have just went from there. But, I mean, I have no problem with, like, now I'm so over it. You know, when we talked about it before. We got really hot and heavy and shit. Yeah. It's over. It's sailed for me. You know, moving on. We're doing a show on Rumble. We're going down to the Super Bowl tomorrow. Uh, and yeah, but I just wanted to get something out. I want to get back in the groove of doing content again because I, I was enjoying myself while I was there and I do enjoy this like, mm -hmm. a lot. You know, this is one of my passions. I feel you. I mean, my last question, is there ever a point where like Kyle goes on a podcast, says some shit about the deal or about you and you just look at it and you go, you know what? I'm fucking, I don't care anymore. I, I'm at that I'm, point. I'm done. I'm at I'm that done. point where I'm done. Yeah. It's either going to be figured out behind the scenes, which is being right now done behind yeah. the scenes or, um, if they keep poking the bear, like, you know, but like, that's like that's what don't, I'm, that's don't what I'm saying. Me, at, what, at what point can they not poke the bear because you're just over it? Um, I don't think ever. Yeah, yeah, well, I, don't I don't think ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll see you next week. Then I don't, I don't we'll run it. We'll run it back. <laughs> yeah, I don't. You know, you know. No, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, dude, sure. focus on yourself. No, that's what we're doing now. I, I have spoken focus on myself and whatnot. But uh, yeah, I think I just wanted to do a cool little quick piece of content. I don't think I explained it even as good as I could have today. But at the same time, that uh, I did work very, very hard on that show, and I'm just disappointed that it. What What don't you feel like you explained properly? I think there's just more to it that you guys don't even like. There's just like 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 Kyle saying that I was like behind the scenes, like a problem, and he had to take care. Like it's so mm -hmm. disrespectful to hear that. Like yeah. oh, that's what really hurts me is like. I wasn't what, like in terms of you showing up on time and I, like being I, at all the interviews, that dude, type of dude, shit. I was a, I was a, I was a plus man. You I'm, didn't miss anything. You I, missed a couple. I missed one uh -huh. show with Sugar Sean that we're going to do. 
Uh-huh. Why? Um, because I had, and I'll tell you, because I'm going to be always honest. Always cause, honest. Because I went out the night before, uh-huh. and I went a little wild, and I, <laughs> and I was just like, God. Where no, were you guys at? I'm sick. I forget. I don't know. But I was I was hungover really bad, and uh-huh. we didn't really have to do an episode immediately. And so we had some time, so I was just like, all right, you know, I just can't do it. And just told them, I was like, I can't make it. The other one was the game episode, the final one. And the only reason I didn't make that episode with the game contract was, was because I – he claimed that, you know, he gave me 24 hours to fix the contract. No, I gave you eight months. Uh-huh. I just said I can't fucking – I can't, brother. There's no respect shown. There was zero respect shown. Right. I gave my all. You were in deep negotiations. I gave my all. Go back to yeah. that clip of Tyson. When uh-huh. Kyle said that Bob doesn't ask for much. Bob just fucking shows up and he crushes it and whatever yeah. he said on that thing. But now it's funny he's taking that back when shit starts hitting the fan. Yeah. And I was never a problem behind the scenes. Yeah. I mean, it's the Nelk Boys and Bob Mennery. Yeah, we were wild at times, but never an issue. Yeah. I was always dialed with work and always doing whatever I can was for the best of that show. Man, fuck, I want to get you just back to doing comedy and running funny shit. Like, fuck the contract stuff. Aren't you tired of it? Let's fucking... Yeah, I'm, I'm over Oh, you want to be funny again? That's what I was going to say, Bob. Aren't you, are you tired of fighting... Yeah, yeah, I'm tired of fighting. I'm uh, I'm pretty much over it. I uh, that's why I just. But I did want to just at least vent because I do have a lot of people that you, you do follow you and are so engaged in all this shit that I just do feel that you know I got to put something out there. Especially I have to be better off at you know following up my word. Yeah. You know I say so many things that I'm going to do and then I just don't do them. You know that's mm-hmm. one of my weaknesses. So yeah. I just need to follow up with my word. That's one of my things I want to get better at. And that's, dude, that's uh, you're ambitious too. Sometimes so. when you are, you want to try to do everything. You can't do everything. Mm-hmm. So should we go play some casino online and the buffies? the buffies and fucking blackjacks and all that? Yes. <laughs> I love it. All right. That's all I want to do. I just want to come back and talk for a minute. That was a good talk, bro. That was a good talk. I had to get some shit off my chest. It was a good talk. All right. Love it, Scotty. Thank you.